It's working. Good show. I am Renee Hobbs, and we are just thrilled you are part of our 20th anniversary celebration. Um, in the next hour, we are hoping to um, kind of reflect on the past, the present, and the future of the Media Education Lab. Um, and uh, Yanti was able to find something from the way back machine. So before we do our emotional check-in, Yanti, will you uh, show the way back machine and let yes. us remember the Media Education Lab from the olden times? So thank God for the uh, information uh, literacy folks on the internet that created way back machine that you can put any website and then you go back and see if they got screenshots. So this is the earliest ever Media Education Lab uh, webpage. Uh, you can see here February 17th, 2007, although the lab was established in 2003. Uh, and then you can go through the years and see how the website uh, changed and evolved uh, during the years um, and got into, you know, Temple and the logo that we had and then moving to uh, URI and uh, having the Lego a uh, logo re- uh, Imagine, so it's a cool thing that I'm using. I'm sure you also are using with your students to look at what I do is I have them choose their favorite TV show or website and then they go and find it. And there's a whole discussion about like uh, how, um, you know, nostalgic it was. So this is the logo that was redesigned 10 years ago. And now here we are 20 years after uh, redesigning it again. So um, I'm gonna move to our usual uh, check-in using another website that uh, is from Virtual Viral Hangouts, which we do emotional check-in, but this one, it's a new check-in that we created just for our um, event today. So Rene, take it away. <laughs> we can't hear you. Okay, so here it is. It's the emotional check-in for today. Do you, do you see all the characters at the party? There are characters at the party and then there are numbers associated with each character. Please place the number of the character that best reflects your mood at this moment, right? And then a little bit of reason. So I'm gonna put my fave, my, mine might right now is number seven, right? So happy to celebrate with my friends. There we go, what number? Oh, what number best reflects your mood at the moment? Put your answer in the chat. <laughs> Michael, Michael Spike says, uh, yeah, number eight. <laughs> Yeah, the day after the weekend of uh, of the weekend of um, Thanksgiving is a great time to celebrate. Um, so we're really glad you're here. Thank you so much for sharing your um, your your news with us, and we we're happy to announce that the Media Education Lab is now officially a public benefit corporation. Right. The IRS has given its approval. We are now a public benefit corporation. Oh, yeah. Rene, you muted yourself. So. Good show. So, um, and I've got all kinds of things going on here that are making it hard for me. Um, yeah, so did I say that we were a public benefit corporation? Right? What does that mean, Renee? A public benefit corporation is a special type of um, business structure that um, basically mandates that we do um, social and public good and that we operate in a responsible and sustainable manner. So we are thrilled to be a new entity in our 20th year um, that represents the mission of the Media Education Lab. And the most important news here is that I am moving into my role as founder and Yanti is assuming the role as director. 
So we are thrilled to have a succession experience after 20 years, Yanti's leading, directing the media education lab. Uh, and I get to sit in the back seat, right? So um, I get- <laughs> no, you'll never be in the back seat, Renee. You always have something positive to contribute. Oh, and does this, mean, <laughs> does this mean it's a 501c3? It is not. It's it not, is not okay. a 501c3. It's a public benefit corporation. So we can make money and okay. do good at the same time. And that's actually the kind of plan. We're going to try to figure out how can we leverage the resources and assets of this amazing online community? How can we leverage those assets to grow it bigger, better, and all the rest? All right, Yanti. Yanti's leading the way because guess what he's been working on for the last year and a half? Okay, hello. Uh, so exciting to see uh, all of you here. Thank you for joining us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a short run through the crazy work that we did on the website because uh, as I was saying, um, the former website that you all know was uh, very much stuck in the early 2000 kind of design. And we've been working with a lot of you on the redesigning. So I'm gonna share my screen and share with you how it looks right now and do a short navigation so that you can see all the amount of not just work that we did in redesigning, but the whole idea was to uh, really communicate to our audiences the plethora of events, materials, and make it searchable. And one of the biggest thing that we did, which existed in the former uh, website, but was not really shared in a way that people could know, I'm gonna share with you right now. And it's like really, really exciting on our, so we're gonna geek out a little bit like uh, for the next several uh, minutes about web design. So and after, and after we talk about uh, the web, th then we're gonna move into a small group discussion like we usually do. So that's coming too. Yeah. Stay tuned. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, the navigation bar that has uh, sub uh, places for some of the things that we're offering. Uh, and the idea is to better explain who we are. So we have the slider with the most like big things that are upcoming, like the Media Ed Forum, which we're going to talk about, the Media Ed Institute, our webinar series. You can see here that we're going to share more about the courses and certificates that we're uh, going to offer. Um, the videos and podcast. We have a new media ed uh, podcast. Renee's the first guest. So you're welcome to, when you uh, click on it, you'll see that you have our YouTube channel has been rearranged. And you can see here in a more organized way all the videos and things uh, there. Um, if you go to our podcast, and there's also here, you can go to the podcast, you can see here the first episode with Renee. It's a short one. And then uh, several of you have interviewed others who want to be interviewed, please reach out. And we're going to have, hopefully, on a weekly basis, new episodes uh, about media education. Uh, and our newsletter that you're obviously receiving, but also the blog have moved back into the um, into the website, you have the strategic plan, which I'm gonna talk about that explains all what we're doing, but previous uh, blogs as well. You have the newsletter. If you don't remember which newsletter what, you have an archive of our newsletter that you can go back and look at it. Um, and as we go down, you can see our mission, which took us a lot of back and forth, uh, but that's the mission of the Media Education Lab after talking to all of you after really brainstorming what is the core value that we want to uh, represent and what are the best practices that we're offering. Obviously, the events like today that you can scroll here and go and uh, see. The teaching resources that were never featured on the homepage that now uh, different uh, teachers, educators can go and see and choose what works for them. Uh, services that we always offered but was not upfront and we welcome your intake for it and if you want to be part of it again that's part of what we're going to talk in the breakout sessions of like which one of those crazy stuff that we're doing you want to be part of if you're not part of it already our more most recent publications um and a picture that a lot of you are there 
just to point out, this is the only year in the Summer Institute I didn't participate. So when you do find Eldo, you cannot find me there. Um, our privacy policy, but here is the cool feature. So the topics always existed, but nobody knew that it existed. And that gives you kind of an infographic or a search that you can go in and look at. Like for me, accessibility and inclusion was very important to add to it. When you click on the topics, you're getting all the events that have been tagged as part of that specific one, all the research that has been done about it, and teaching resources that are connected with it. And so you can go and click on different tags here and go and find which one is interesting for you materials. This is a big thing for the field to really see the mapping of the media literacy kind of tent and interest that is so big and have so many interests. Um, and then of course the newsletter and the side map if you want to understand how the map and the pages and to uh, get like around it. And the menu is sticky so you can keep like going and seeing it. Um, what I'm really most excited about is all the new initiative and old initiative that we're doing. And as I said, in the blog here, you can um, look at the strategic plan where I uh, explain the new logo and really the focus on four areas that uh, that's what we want to do, especially in the next three years to reimagine our next 20 years. And all the things that I did are here that are saying one of the things that I'm just going to share so that you can see the Youth Media Reporter, which was a very known um, media educators journal, is uh, reimagined. And people who want to be part of it, I'm just going to click for a second so you can see on the uh, new website with the new logo. If you want to be part of it, and some of you are, reach out because we want to create an open access uh, journal for uh, practitioners uh, with lessons plan um, there. Um, and then our impact uh, over 20 years. And so I welcome you to, to go in and to read and to contribute to the uh, blog. But now let's go over the exciting events that we have featured. So the coming event is called the Media Ed Forum, which most of you know it as the Northeast Media Literacy Conference, which started um, also almost 20 years ago at University of Connecticut by Dr. Uh, Thomas Goodkind. And then after 11 years, he retired. Three years later, um, I started it again at Central Connecticut State University. Then uh, Caroline Fortuna took it uh, to Rhode Island College, University of Rhode Island, and then pandemic moved us with uh, uh, Pamela Steger, uh, Michelle Ciccone, and then Inglika into the online sphere, where now it's gonna be offered the 17th year uh, as an online two-day conference. You have all the speakers, uh, the registration, uh, we have four strands, and you have also the brief history of the conference to see really the legacy that we're building on. You have the schedule with all the speakers, but what we want to uh, is to have an option for the people who really made it uh, happen to uh, say in a minute, because we need to like move, <laughs> what are you excited about the strand that you're uh, leading? So I see that we have uh, Barbara Burke here. Um, what are you most excited about the conference and the uh, strand that you're leading? Well, first of all, one of the most important things I'm excited about is the opportunity to meet colleagues and to collaborate on new ideas, ways we can solve problems together, ways we can create partnerships, and ways we can build what we know to something even grander. The section I'm working on has some things about engaged research, meaning community embedded research that's done about and with media literacy. And that really excites me because I'm always looking at the ways to connect from a university setting to a community setting. And another one that I want to highlight is the Empowering Students Through Media Creation session, which um, deals with ways in which no matter what you teach, no matter what grade level you teach, you can think about media literacy being connected to 
your topic area. It's much more broader than uh, communication or an English major or social studies or whatever one calls it in your part of the US or the world. So there's a lot of things like that going on. We also have some things dealing with gaming. And so it's going to be a mixture of connected ideas and hopefully connected people by the end of the conference. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I know Inklika, you're here, right? To talk about outside of the classroom. What are you awesome. excited about? Well, I have to admit that I'm so excited about all these trends and I'm 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 excited about the, the, the framework topic. It was the same last year. That is something that is I I believe we it's a huge discussion and we can see exactly part of the mission of the Media Education Lab connecting and ex extending the conceptualization of media literacy. So from my perspective, from um, um, Eastern Europe, um, the classroom, unfortunately, is still creating some boundaries of what is possible, what, what, what you could achieve uh, through this interdisciplinary approach. But outside the classroom, which I have to admit, see also as opportunity to have it in the classroom, but informally through some other initiatives, is exactly this connection with neighboring fields, this expansion of media literacy, this identification of um, all these other um, uh, uh, all these other layers and fields and new developments and advancement that are really really connected. And I think I believe that this is really present in the way that. Uh, this strand, but all other strands also developed with uh, talking about human rights, talking about this framework to me, the most adequate one of the UNESCO that is including all these type of literacies. Here is the artificial intelligence. Here are the freedom of expression and the balances between uh, rights in, in collision. So I'm, I am excited, definitely. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna represent Kathy um, that will be in the other session who did the inside the classroom. And there is um, two um, session in the uh, event itself that we have students coming here. The first session is elementary school kids from Scarsdale who are gonna come and present what they're doing uh, in their classroom. It's during their class on Friday. But also I was very happy to uh, have an option or have uh, friends um, from Finland and Palestine to represent what they're doing, because I think we don't know enough about how media education is done in Palestine, specifically with what's happening today. And then the session following is media literacy in time of war to represent what's happening in Israel and uh, also in Armenia um, during times uh, of war. So very things that are very relevant to what's happening now, touching into different aspects of media literacy in the classroom and not necessarily in the usual way, and the last one here is the Media Literacy Index, which is an initiative that we're doing on measuring media literacy with students in class and in um, uh, work with media literacy now. But really the interesting strand is the last one. And Renee, uh, what are you excited about this trend? Okay, so one of the things that we've learned from our years of uh, online learning is that uh, less is more. So we're going to be drinking in all kinds of rich ideas, and then we're going to take some time for an open forum. This is basically an open forum session. Uh, it worked really well for the um, Northeast Media Literacy Conference, and we're going to continue the tradition. People are going to come, and we're going to throw out a bunch of topics that we think might be fun to talk about, and then people will go into their own breakout rooms to talk about those things. So it's a place to build community, to find the people who want to talk about the things that you care about, um, and to deepen your professional and personal relationships with potential potential or actual collaborators. Thank you. Okay. And uh, now uh, we're going to move from the Media Ed Forum to the Media Ed Institute. Wait, 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 Forrest, uh, okay. Yanti, don't we, we want you guys to come to the Media Ed Forum. Yeah. So just saying, uh, we also wanna test whether the registration actually works because we just opened it today. So if you're feeling up to it, why don't you register for it right after this meeting? And then if you run into problems, will you email us? <laughs> yeah. In general, like you can be a beta tester. 
because we want you to be there on January 12th. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Wes. Okay. Yeah. So the Media Ed Institute, um, you know, for 11 years, we've been part of the Summer Institute in Digital Literacy. A lot of you took it and you knew this experience. And as we move through COVID, like with the Northeast Media Literacy Conference, we realized, hey, we can also do it online. However, the way we did it um, in 20 and 21, and in some part in um, 22, at the hybrid uh, conference, was really imitating what would be the in-person experience into the online. What we're super excited uh, this year is that we took the time to reimagine to online professional development from the start. And uh, the way it's designed is not to be the in-person that is the week long uh, that is happening in Providence at the University of Rhode Island under uh, Julie Cairo's leadership. What we're doing here is really designing it as an online experience. And uh, what you can see here is that there is the details, but when you click on the program, you can see the modules and the way that it's going to be with three main components uh, that are going to be in the experience. And one is the real time, what we call instead of synchronous real time learning, that will be Wednesday night, besides one Tuesday that Frank will have an amazing uh, variety show to show us learning uh, through play and music. So thank you, Frank, for organizing that for all of us. That's going to be the main social uh, event, and it's going to be two hours, when all the other uh, events will be an hour long. Um, and you can see that we're going to follow with the items of Connect with Kristen Zimke, uh, Access with Amanda Latasha Armstrong, Analyze with Renee, um, Create with Troy Hicks, Reflect with me, and then uh, Act and Impact uh, as we bring everything together. Following each one of those, there are going to be a keynote conversation of an hour long. Uh, that will be the uh, Fast Friend and Compass Point with Kara Clayton and Mary-Kate uh, Lonergan. The whole school inclusion with William Yang, Paul Tomizawa, Sue Loft, and Meredith Dutra. Question formation with Michael Robreco and Amanda Murphy. Uh, media making and fair use with Christine Hawkinson and Jamie Rue. Uh, future protocol with uh, Michael Spikes. And then time for reflection at the end. So that's the, the real time. It will be recorded. But that's the real-time keynotes. But then the new thing is, instead of workshop, we have micro-credential courses. And we have five of those, which some of the folks who develop it are here. One of critical AI literacy with Pamela Morris and Scott Moss here with us. Uh, ESL with movie critical analysis with uh, Pedro Mora, Estefania Onan here also, and Yvette uh, Coyle. Uh, the Affordance of Infographic with Mark Davis, Leadership of Care with Angie Hartley, and Teaching the Conspiracy with uh, Wesley uh, Fryer. So those are going to be six weeks asynchronous um, classes through Pathright uh, that with your registration, you choose one of those. And for additional fee, you can get access to others. We want to encourage people to focus on one out of those five. And then the last part, which is the learning and the project that usually would have been done in a week with a dyad will be six week work with a partner. As you can see here, that we give you time to connect and then work while you're still learning on the asynchronous anytime learning courses. And those are the three uh, components. So I let Renee um, give like what she's excited about with this new basically online institute that goes back 30 years to in Harvard where Rene started to do professional development. Yeah, that's thank you for sharing that, Yanti. I am, of course, thinking back over 20 years as I celebrate the future of the Media Education Lab. But in 1993, I got to offer a week-long program at Harvard Graduate School of Education, bringing together the media literacy community and what I remember most about it. Yes, it was great that Neil Postman was there. Yes, it was great that, um, that uh, Joshua Meyerowitz was there and Pat Ofterheide. It was great. The experts are great. 
But what I remember most about it was the meaningful conversations and relationships and the new leaders who were there in that room. And that idea of creating a space for us, for everyone to learn from everyone, this is what I'm most excited about. And I also like, Yanti, that it's not just one intense week in the summer, which I always felt was overwhelming and exhausting. I like the idea that it's like once a week on Wednesday, it's six weeks, it's done by spring break and that I have a chance to like give myself the gift of learning. Like I put my own needs to be a learner. Like I make that important. So I, I, I feel like um, that's what I love best about this new uh, reconceptualization of professional lifelong learning for um, emerging and established experts in the field. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if any of the uh, people who are helping with the Institute want to share what they're excited about. We'll oh yeah, let's hear from Wes. Wes, what are you looking forward to about this crazy new way of doing the Summer Institute? I just love how I feel this tribe models best practice and feeds my soul because not only am I excited to, you know, to share some things, but it is so energizing to just see the different things that people are doing and experience. It's like the opposite of COVID for most people. Like it was worse practice, like throw people who've never done any research or experienced online learning into the situation. I feel like we're the opposite. There are so many experienced people here really feeding us and providing such a rich menu of choices. I am, I'm on cloud nine. We are so happy you are part of it. Thank you so much. Hey, Frank. Frank Romanelli, what are you excited about, about this crazy new way of doing uh, lifelong learning for grownups? I'm about, I'm excited about the newness and, and about the opportunity to, um, yeah, to expand the time to learn. And, um, and also that um, it offers the options. So those of us who enjoy the week of in-person live experience, um, we get to do that. And at the same time, then we get to bring the two together in our own learning and experience and share even more than we ever have before. So I'm very excited about all of that. Thank you for sharing. Can we hear from one more person, Yanti, before we go on? I see Scott on the hey, call. Scott Moss. What's, what are you excited about looking forward to about this crazy new idea? Well, <clears throat> that was a hard, hard act to follow, but just the quality of the people and the quality of the content is is, is very inspiring to me and, and that you're all really focused on the right things uh, as far as media literacy education and uh, and focusing on the different audiences. So uh, th those are some of the things I'm excited about. You know, Scott, I um, want to really build on that in a way. I, and I love how Yanti's topic search helps us all understand that like this is so much more than fake news, right? And fake news is important. Disinformation propaganda, you know how much I love that topic, but Yanti's reframing of this helps us see the excitement that media literacy is always changing and will continue to change. And we're kind of figuring it out together, what it can be, what it should be. Yanti, did you know in today's New York Times, not to get off the track or anything? We cannot see because of your background. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in today's New York Times, which I am holding up, is a great op-ed. I totally recommend it to you guys. They call media literacy attention education. Intriguing, huh? All right, Yanti, take it away. So I want to hear from three more people. I want uh, Kira, Estefania, and Pamela um, so, to um, close about the Institute. Yes. I wanted to say, I want to piggyback off of Frank because Frank said, hi, everybody. Frank said exactly what I um, wanted to say also. It's not Summer Institute or the online experience. It's and. Um, it's They're both op awesome opportunities for great learning to happen. If you like online, you can do it. If you like face-to-face -face intensive learning, you can do it. So we're, we're, pro we're trying to provide... Um, learning experiences that are complementary to each other and support learners wherever they're at in whatever ways they're able to um, 
get involved. And so, sorry, my cat in the background don't we really don't work see, together. Well. So we really, we're really excited to offer um, both opportunities for everyone. Thank you. Um, Estefania? Hi, everyone. So, well, I had the pleasure to be with you and to participate in some of your workshops, which were very, very inspir inspirational for me. Now I will participate as a teacher, but I'm sure I will learn a lot from all the participants, especially because I'm so far away, like in Spain. So being able to discover other teachers from abroad perceptions or teaching methods is really exciting for us. Also here, this media literacy education is really an unexplored topic in Spain and um, very absent in class. So we are really excited to be able to promote it with you and to learn from you, obviously. Thank you so much. Okay, Pamela Morris, you're gonna close the Institute sharing. What are you Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna piggyback a little bit on Estefania because I was gonna say um, the networking, the diverse groups of people that I get to meet um, through uh, different education opportunities at the lab people who are not co-located with me, people who are in other countries, people who are in different jobs. So I get to go beyond just talking to other professors or students and talk to community members and K-12 teachers and librarians and nonprofits. Um, so that, you know, the, the, the people that I meet through these opportunities are probably my favorite thing. Thank you. And um, we have with us um, Silke that um, we're, um, working uh, together on uh, a project with other um, colleague, I'm gonna share the screen. Um, and you can see here the graduate symposium, we want to support students. And so we created this place for um, graduate students to apply. We're trying to think how and what, it's not like we have all the ideas. If you go to the programs, you have like, what are sessions we're going to do in the fall as online to create a community and then together to figure out how this community can actually meet in person and how we can get the funding. So for now, I put here some participants and um, uh, mentors, but anybody is welcome to email me and to be part of this group. And we're going to figure out how to go. Silke, what do you have to say about that? What are you excited about this? Crazy idea. Yeah, I, I'm so excited about that idea we had like for, I guess, one and a half years. And now it's evolving and developing. And uh, I'm so excited that um, it's a great possibility where um, uh, mentors and master and doctoral students can meet and discuss their uh, research uh, projects and ideas. And as it is an international community, uh, we can learn so much uh, from each other and to have great uh, dialogue. And so I'm really looking forward to develop that in a collaborative effort. And I don't want to speak for you, but you tell me if I'm correct. So when I interview Silke for the podcast, I realized that I didn't know that we miss each other by several months in 2010 when each one of us came as visiting scholar. So Silke came as a graduate student to work with Rene, and you can see, you know, the development and collaboration. And I came as a visiting scholar to see should I actually be a PhD student of Rene. So this is a tradition that has been going on and Renee has been doing that I think we want to uh, bring back in the sense of like helping other graduate students the way that we were like mentored and help. Um, so I don't know, Silke, how do you feel about that? That's how I see it. No, um, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I was uh, lucky to yeah to, to um, work with you for the last 10 years, at least half of these 20 years. And so uh, I absolutely um, agree. It's about uh, learning uh, from each other. It's about a meeting. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's an international community of practice. I'm looking forward to that. We are indeed an international community of practice. And now it's time for the small group discussion. One, one last thing, and then we'll go. One last okay. thing. <laughs> so Mike Spikes, I'm going to put you on the spot. The Media Research Jam. And that's, again, something that we're working on. But we want to reinvent the way that we collaborate on our research on media literacy education. 
And with Mike, as we're working on the Illinois Media Literacy Coalition, we see the need. And I put uh, here ideas of sessions, how we can create sessions that would be collaborative. I put your collaborators who said they want to be part of it. And again, you're more than welcome to um, be asked to be featured here. And what's important is in the follow-up, I put what I know of research that is happening right now and collaboration that is happening, but I would like the list to be longer. I think it should be. Mike, um, what are you excited about this part? Yeah, I can say really briefly, uh, I would be looking forward to opportunities to talk and sort of build bridges between the, you know, the sort of research uh, areas in which media literacy has been involved with and in, in the practice um, part, because I know personally, as somebody who has jumped from being a practitioner to a scholar now in the area, and I shouldn't really make a distinction between the two, but um, in trying to, again, bring those two worlds together, because it seems in a lot of cases, it can be difficult for um, practitioners and researchers to find those that common those common interests and those common sort of threads. So I'm looking very much forward to trying to build that uh, as part of this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Always fun to collaborate with you. We're doing a lot of stuff together. Um, okay. So Renee, do you want to explain what we're going to do in the uh, breakout room? I'm going to uh, put the questions. We can't hear you. Okay, here we go. This is our plan. Uh, we're going to put you into groups with whoever you happen to get into a group with, and we want you to respond to one or more of these questions. I put it in the chat. Oh, good show. Do you have a fond memory of the Media Education Lab from the past? What features of the Media Education Lab are, um, are what features of the website do you want to explore further? If you want, you can go and look around and talk and talk about the website itself. And then this is the most important question. What kinds of new programs, services, and uh, collaborations should we consider for the future? Right? So that is that is the plan. Uh, Yanti, we have breakout rooms. Yes. Uh, three of them, right? Uh, I created, did you, I created, oh, you created. yeah, good yeah. Show. I created a little bit more so that we, uh, people have the, the option to actually share. It's not, we have so many people here. So exactly. Uh, We're going to take about 10 or 12 minutes. And then when we come back, we'd like you to share uh, something really cool that came out of your discussion. Give me a thumbs up. If you understand what we're doing now, it's going to be a conversation. We're talking about the past, the present and the future. Have a great conversation. Okay, room are open. Let me know if you can get in. Is the case? Okay. Renee, make sure that uh, you're uh, unmuted. I am unmuted. Are you back? Okay, it's time for some reflection. We're, we're, we hope you had a great conversation, but we'd love to hear some insights that came out of that um, discussion, something uh, that you think the whole group needs to hear. The floor is open. We're going to hear from five of you. So who wants to go first? Wes. Lots to talk about AI and the ways in which AI is being utilized in the classroom and just chances to network. Um, also research and thinking about ways we could share research that our constituents and communities done and then ways we might be able to collaborate on research. Thanks so much. Who's next? Ditto that on AI. We'd like some guidance. Um, and we'd also like for the, um, the group to help with a convening of the field internationally um, to help talk about and share ideas uh, that are happening around the country and around the world. Thanks for sharing. Who's next? Renee. I think Renee, you were. Hi, Auntie. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good. Um, I, I 
Very much. I, I, I'm so glad Kara brought up, we, we talked about a convening, which I think is essential. Uh, there are a variety of groups. I think it ties in with interdisciplinarity also. I think AI affects us all, both in, in, in not only students, not, you know, not only schooling, it is in the workplace and it's in our whole um, ethos as to how we go forward as human beings. So the, the, the parallel track to me is um, what does it mean to be human? And therefore, how does all of this intersect? Because this is a global, it's global, as we just said, and it's also so powerful. And we, I don't think we have a lot of, I, we, I think the time is moving very quickly for us to do this. So I say congratulations, Renee and Yanti, and they, what you're doing is beautiful. And um, and and we've got to work fast because if we watched what happened with Sam Altman this past weekend, we know that the power that profit may um, go over philosophy, and so we've got to be careful and and be a voice. I really appreciate your observations about this idea of using media literacy and media education and the future of media education to reconnect to our shared humanity. Renee, thank you so much for sharing. Who's next? Insights that came out of your small group discussion that you want to uh, bring forward about the future. You're thinking about the future or maybe you're thinking about the past. And you can write in the chat if you don't want to speak. Um... What do you want this community to be five years from now, 10 years from now? What role can you play in deepening and broadening this community, increasing the diversity of this community? I don't believe that I'm the right person to present at group three. So I try to summon someone else from the chat, but uh, uh, probably because you know that I'm my, my uh, modus operandi is to be excited. I was excited by this conversation. I was excited by the stories about Lucas jumping in because a few professor hopes to present the next day on a summer school or uh, this uh, realizing how much, how, how, how involved is Professor uh, Pamela Harris also uh, in the work of lab and will be in the future. So I would dream to be 10 years younger and to be a student and take all these opportunities because we all agree that there are many opportunities and there are more there to be probably explored like Fulbright for media literacy. That was something that was brought uh, and we all agree that all these resources in one place, like in a hub, like in our library, in the website, this is amazing. It's on the tips and the fingers. So it is enormous and it will, it will, it is a treasure. And I believe that it will build on together on that. Wow, thank you, Inglika. Okay, so we have several more minutes. What I want to do is the last thing, which is to show you how um, we navigate to our events. So you have the AI and inequality in media education, but you can also go to events, free webinars, series, but also the Media Ed Club has its own now page and upcoming meeting and past meeting specifically. So those who wanted to kind of, where was this meeting that we, uh, so we tagged it. It's all about like tagging and everything. So you can find all the information there. So now that you can go to the free webinar series, I'm gonna let Davina explain what is coming up. Davina. Thank you so much. I'm going to um, take sharing the screen from yes. you. Yes. And uh, this is, well, I think it's just the perfect segue because everyone was just talking about how we need webinars and uh, collaborations. So here it is. We've kind of preemptively offered something at the Media Education Lab for you. Uh, our AI in the Classroom webinar series has been running for some time now. Uh, I've added the link to chat already, and you can go to this uh, web page uh, at the new, newly launched website of the Media Education Lab and look at all the past events that we've already covered, all the recordings are here, as well as uh, information about the upcoming meetings which are going to happen. 
and um, the other webinar, which is about global collaborations, um, which was also mentioned in, in the group, uh, in the breakouts just now, is going to be for this particular semester on inequalities and media education. And here we go. This is the site page on the new um, website and the information about the already conducted meetings, the recordings are here. Uh, and the next one is scheduled for December 21st. Uh, but not just this, we also have a bunch of other announcements uh, we've planned into the future a little bit with um, the Ed Club. And here we go. Ah, oh, well, it's not working, the sharing, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, this December meeting, oh, the December meeting with the Media Ed Club is going to be with Professor Jenny Hobbs herself. Here we go. I can Jenny. share my screen if you want me to. Yes, please. Ah, oh, I have it here. Okay. That's it. Go there, just click on the link there. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about the pick a side, pick a side, pick a side now video. Yes. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to say about this video, isn't there? So come join us for that. We're gonna okay. use the New York Times Learning Networks curriculum and try it out and explore it and see how could this work with high school students, with college students and with adult learners. Okay, so Shout out to Davina and Jocelyn for organizing those webinar series, the Media Ed Club. <clears throat> and congratulations to Davina, moving only in several days to City University of London. So a big achievement for your postdoc. Uh, and you. also, I wanted really also a shout out to our newest team member, Francia Garcia Hernandez, for all the amazing videos and marketing that you've seen in the last uh, several months. Uh, thank you so much for all your hard work. Um, thank you. Very exciting. 20 years. Who would believe it, right? Uh, so thanks, Rene. Closing. Hey, listen, thanks for being part of the last 20 years. And as I look around the room at all this amazing talent, I realize like I have learned from every single one of you in so many ways. I can't even imagine how much um, I have benefited personally. You know, I always feel like the Media Education Lab has been kind of a little selfish thing, you know? Because like, isn't it great to hang out with smart, cool, talented people and to hear what they think and then to learn from them and to get your mind expanded. Uh, and so uh, your participation as in this learning community is so incredible. We want you to help us imagine the future. And so after this meeting is over, Keep imagining the future, right? Yanti's, he's young, right? He's got another 20 years to figure this out. And your participation in this community is gonna be so vibrant uh, to make the future uh, a, real, a real opportunity for all of us. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yanti, thank you so much for your great well, leadership, for putting it all together. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.